We turn now to the troubled California home insurance market, which has left many consumers facing higher costs, with major insurers raising their rates, citing the growing risk of wildfires. However, this new year brings an array of new laws, all designed to benefit homeowners, including those who are facing a disaster. And here to help us break down some of these changes is Carl Sussman, president of the Sussman Insurance Agency, who has a master's degree in insurance management from Columbia University. Carl, good to see you. We always appreciate the time. So we're starting off uh, this year, and we have a lot of new changes to insurance regulations in California. We'll start with one of the changes here. Insurance policy can no longer limit a payment to a homeowner who decides to rebuild a fire damaged home in a new location. What has changed here and why is this so significant? Well, Alex, you know, it's, it's funny. You have my notes. I thought, how does he know this? This is what I was going to be starting and telling him. But yeah, what, what, this ha what is happening with this is the Department of Insurance put out their 2024 bulletin of highlights of important changes, basically. And one of them, and this is a significant one, does not penalize people if they decide to move somewhere else. So in the past, if there was a loss, if your house burned to the ground, maybe you were in a high fire area, perhaps, and you chose to not want to rebuild there, the insurance contracts were such that you were penalized for trying to, in essence, cash out the policy versus rebuild. So with this regulation in place, you're no longer penalized to do that. I would almost say you're almost you're given an incentive, depending on the area that you're in, to rebuild somewhere else. All right. So let's talk about another change to state law. And this will, will give homeowners in those disaster zones more time to pay their premiums. Obviously, that sounds that sounds nice. If you're you're facing a disaster, how much more time are people going to have and who qualifies for this grace period? Well, what happens is whenever there's a disaster, if, the, if there's a state of emergency declared, then there's an automatic 60 day grace period that comes into play for people to pay their premiums, which is good because if there's an emergency and you can't get to your mailbox, how you expect to know your premium is yeah. due, what, what, you know, what's happening? So there's an automatic 60 day grace period that will come into play for anyone that's in an area where there's a loss and there's been a state of emergency declared. All right. So ex explain another change here in, in the insurance regulations. Uh, homeowners who are again, this all uh, applies to homeowners who are filing a claim after a state of emergency has been declared where they live. Uh, you know, in all likelihood, we're talking about a natural disaster like a wildfire. But uh, starting this year, homeowners now have the ability to combine different insurance coverages as they work to rebuild or replace their home. How does this work? This is huge. This is huge. One of the biggest frustrations in, in the insurance business when it comes to property is replacing, is, is coming up with the correct replacement value, right? How much do you insure the house for, right? And insurance policies will have certain limits for the structure, for the other structure, and there's there's little lines that go down. Well, one of the things they're able to do now is if there is a shortfall in the dwelling coverage amount, right? So the amount that we've anticipated it would cost to rebuild the structure, you can tap into another line, for example, the other structure, and use those dollars to help uh, fill in that gap of coverage that you need to rebuild your structure. It's it's never been done. Wow. It's a huge deal. And as good as it is, I just want to be sort of a, a public service announcement. Yeah. Don't think that it's a good that we can underinsure now and use that mm. as a cushion, right? I mean, it, you it's don't want to rely on right? this. Yeah, you don't you exactly. don't want to rely on it. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. Let me ask you here, too, about how all of these new regulations that have been put in place this year for the insurance market uh, are going to speed up the process of filing a claim for someone whose home is damaged or destroyed during a natural disaster. Tremendously. I was actually shocked. I mean, I'm a, I'm a nerd, right? This bulletin came out with 30 some odd points on Friday afternoon. I thought, oh, my weekend, it's, it's going <laughs> to be go. great. Your weekend is all filled up. And I sat reading right everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, it, and, and I would say half of it, mm -hmm. uh, the insurance commissioner has set out giving strict guidelines on claims and how long an insurance company can spend before it has to give an update on a claim, how much money they have to pay out immediately for living expenses if somebody has to move out how quickly they have to give notice if they're changing an adjuster. If they change adjusters more than once, they have X number of days. They have yeah. to give a full summary to the client. So lots of good stuff in there for that. Yeah, everything to move the process along more quickly. Finally, Carl, as long as we have you here, let, let's talk about a big piece of news that came out this week. The, the state's top private insurer, State Farm, announced it is going to be raising 
Home insurance rates by 20% this year. Auto insurance rates going up as well. But th this increase is going to affect about 5 million Californians. A huge impact. Uh, we know that insurers say that they are facing increased liability because we're seeing more destruction over the past uh, couple of years from wildfires in California. How, how are you explaining these sharp rate hikes to customers? You know, I try and make it about the reality, which is it's math. It's really, there's no, there's no magic to it. You know, an insurance company can't make money unless it sells insurance. So if they're choosing not to sell insurance, there must be a good reason. And that's, they're not able to charge the premium to make money. So what we have is sort of the boomerang effect, I'm calling it. We had, you know, unbelievable inflation. We had increase of cost of goods. We had all sorts of things that were going on, lumber costs, labor costs, parts shortages, all these things. And the insurance commissioner, suppressed rates so that none of the insurance carriers could raise rates to keep up with all of those things for about 32 months. And that was to help protect consumers. And it did that. Right. What we're seeing now is, you know, the rubber band snapping back and all of those costs are starting to be put back into place, similar to the way that um, the governor was talking about getting back to normal. We're sort of getting back to that normal place where where we would expect three percent, four percent, whatever it is, a few dollars more, right? Every year things cost more. But when things were suppressed for so long, and at the same time we had all of these things going on during the pandemic, the rates were not held, were not increasing. Now we're seeing this whiplash effect. So I think what we're going to be expecting is rates like this in the short term. Okay. And then as the industry starts to re-enter the market and competition starts to come back and they start competing with each other, then we'll get to see a little bit of rate relief as they start to compete for your business. Let's hope things settle down uh, sooner rather than later. We appreciate the insight for breaking down all of these new regulations. Carl Sussman, good to see you. Thanks for the time. My pleasure. Thanks, Alex. Absolutely.